Seventy-six-year-old Frances McDonald of Green Meadows developed a passion for fiddle music at the tender age of nine, and today he still uses the same instrument his father dug out of an attic and glued back together. Dad had not noticed and one day and took it down and was looking at it and asked my uncle if he, he'd uh, could take it home and fi fix it up and play it. And he said, oh, sure, go ahead, take it. I can't play it. He said, it's a very nice and very good quality fiddle. Yeah. And I took it to a, a fiddle maker, must be you know, 20 years ago now. And I had it all re redone over. Well, it was made in Germany, I think, by a violin maker. That the on is just a stamp on, on the inside of it, saying it was a it's a Paganini violin. Mm -hmm. It must be near 200 years old. Yeah. Old. yeah. I think it belonged originally belonged to an old uncle that worked away in Boston in the shipyards. He has had several influences over the years. My father was a, a fiddle player and he used to play for a lot of dances and uh, weddings and things like that. I developed a great liking for music, but music doing music on my father's side and also on my mother's side. I started playing first and Don Messer was the big uh, name in fiddle playing then, fiddle music. And so. After the K Britain music started coming on the radio, my well, being as I'm a Scottish descent, I suppose it, I, I liked the K Britain music. Then I, I took a great liking to K Britain music. Started playing around for school or school dances. They always yeah. call them school long room school dances. School dances. Whatever any amplification is all just bare fiddle and guitar. There, my father helped me with some of the techniques that he, he knew. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I developed, I started dan playing for dances, I suppose, when I was 14 years old, playing for weddings and showers. And Throughout the mid-50s to early 60s, the dance scene changed a bit. Mr. McDonald and his bandmates were still doing the weekend circuit around Mount Stewart Trackety Corn Band and Morale, but that was the time rock music began to emerge. Some of the kids, the young people, would bring records and play a record machine through the sound system. Okay. And they danced dance to the rock and roll music to, uh, over the record player. Right. You know, and then we'd fill in there with the old time square sets. And then and Morel, and we, we played both uh, modern and old time yeah. music. There's no shortage of venues for square dancing sets. They play, uh, uh, have old time square sets in uh, Goose River, at the Goose River mm -hmm. dances there. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Roller Bay Fiddle Festival, the, the, the Outside dances there in the summertime up there, mm -hmm. doing square dances. And some of the seniors clubs around, they still do square dances too. Still, Mr. McDonald said fiddle music seems to be thriving even today. Not as vibrant as it used to be, but there's a lot of, still a lot of young people taking up the fiddle, you know. Mm -hmm. Still alive, alive and well, really. <laughs> Must be the the sound or the life in the in the music, I guess probably, and mm -hmm. it's just something that attracts them. Something attracts them anyway. In the 1980s, the PEI Fiddlers Association was formed. So I joined up that with them, and we traveled out to Cape Britain, and I was out to uh, where a group of us. Uh, 19, I think it was 1983, we went to British Columbia. Actually, when I was young, young, when I was young, it wasn't any problem for me to pick up a new tune, you know, I could hear it one night and probably if I heard it again, I'd have it. I never took a music lesson, I never took, learned to read music, and I kind of 
wish now I was, I was able to read read the notes, but then they tell tell me, oh, play your own way, your own way, and it's a more natural, and you you know, put your own your own uh, flavor on it. <laughs> when I started off first, when I started first, probably I made two dollars a night or three dollars a night, and then it eventually got. I was making five dollars a night, and then it went up to ten dollars a night. Yeah. And I suppose that the last of it, I was getting closer up around the hundred dollar a night. Don Messer recorded this tune. It's called the Poor Girl Waltz.